Hey everyone, in this episode, I want to show you another security concept in GraphQL. And this one is about limiting the allowed execution depths of your GraphQL requests. By the way, we are running workshops throughout the next year. In January, you can meet us at NDC London. In April, we are at .NET Days Romania. And in May, you can find us at NDC Oslo. So if you want to spend two days with Martin and me diving deep into GraphQL concepts, just join us there. If you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button. And now let's dive in. I already have prepared here a little project. It's a bit bigger than the book's author's example that I use usually, just so we can also see the problematic around GraphQL query depths. Okay, this project is built around cryptocurrencies. Let's have a quick look. Okay, let's create a new tab and then go straight to the schema reference. And in the schema reference, let's take the column view and have a look at the query type. And you can see there are a couple of fields here that we can dive into, like the assets field or the me field, or also like specific asset fetch fields. Uh, we are going to take the assets field here, and then you can see I can drill into the nodes here and get the actual asset. And then I could drill into the price, and from the price, I could drill into the price change or go back to the asset depending on from where you get the asset price it could be practical to also go back to the asset here let's write a simple query so in order to get for instance the asset name i could just get all the assets here and then select the name field and run that and this query is a simple query nice to use no problem for our graphql server so what the query depth analysis really is about, is about complex queries that go deep. Let's for instance, grab this query here. You can see we are getting the assets here, also the name, then we drill into the price, then into the asset again, then into the price. And you can see we are repeating that a couple of times here. And if we didn't use something like data loader, where we actually cached already this price, this would trigger data fetches at every level. Think about projections. We would generate SQL that really fetches in that depth. And I now could also add lots of properties that I want to get in each of these levels. So this can become problematic for a GraphQL server. You might even go deeper here. What we want to do is securing our GraphQL server so you cannot go indefinitely deep. For this, let's head back to our GraphQL server. And here we go to the configuration which we have in the program CS. And to add the GraphQL depths validation rule, we just say add max execution depths rule. And then we just fill in a depth that we think is all right. Let's start with three. And if we run now this query here, it will fail because this depth is nine and it exceeded the configured depth of three. So how do you get the right depth for your queries? And that is easy actually. Look at the queries that you actually use with your GraphQL server. So I could have, for instance, a look at queries that are typical for me. This here could be a typical query. And if I copy that into my tab here and run that, I can see that I have a depth of seven for this query. So that could be a reasonable query depth, seven. So we go back here and we set it to seven and then let's check our GraphQL client again. We rerun that and everything is fine. But you can also now see that actually our introspection query fails. And uh, that is because the introspection might need more depths than the queries that you usually run. So what we can do here is exclude the introspection from the query depth analysis and then go back to our GraphQL client and refresh that and it works again. But now you could exploit the query depth through our introspection, right? The introspection queries have a less impact on your data system that's one thing and the second thing is i would secure the introspection anyway through our introspection validation rule i created an episode on that how to secure the introspection so have a look at that combine these two rules and then you limit the depths for normal queries you only allow introspection for certain users and then you're pretty safe. But again, this depends on, on your setup. If you have something like GitHub, where you want to give people access to introspection, then I wouldn't skip the introspection analysis here and 
take the depths of the introspection query. Okay, there's one more thing. Maybe we want to allow different users, like our developers, to skip the depth analysis. And you can also do that. The first thing that you have to do then is, because at the moment the validation rule can validate a query once, and then cache the result, and then not ever run this validation rule on that query again. But if we now want to use a user context to define if we are allowed to have a certain depth or skip the validation rule at all, we can opt into another option here and allow request overrides. And that means this rule is actually run every time a query comes in. And we can now create a request interceptor. And in the request interceptor, we override the onCreate async method here. Let me reformat it. And then we can use some extension methods that we have in Hot Chocolate. So we can take the request builder here and then use, for instance, the skip execution depth analysis here. And this will tell the validation engine that we want to skip this particular analysis of our request. So in our case, I haven't set up authentication. So I'm just using a header to show you that. So we're going to take the HTTP context here then look at our request and check if a skip header is there. So we don't validate if any value is with our header. We just check if the header is there. And it's just to show you how to implement this rule in a dynamic way where different users or different scopes in the token define what kind of depth analysis you have. So in this case, we are skipping it. And let's have another thing here where we can essentially have a more strict validation rule. So if we have the strict header, we just allow a depth of two, okay? So let's go back to Banana Cake Pop and let's take our deep query and we run that. This isn't allowed because we have a depth of nine and we are only allowing a depth of seven. So now we can take our header here and say skip. Let me just send a one in so we have a value and we run that and we get the results. Now I'm allowed to run this query even though it's violating our query depths analysis. And if I go for strict here, then you can see I'm only allowing two here and we detected nine. So this shows you a bit how you can reuse this rule even with dynamic parameters like certain users that use your GraphQL server. So this video showed you another aspect of GraphQL security. There are more coming because there are actually more concepts and uh, you should make sure, depending on how you deploy your GraphQL server as a public endpoint, uh, like the GitHub approach or as a more private thing, like for instance, Twitter, where they use mainly persisted queries and the GraphQL server will only run these persisted queries. So depending on what kind of GraphQL server you have, you should apply these security rules. If you want to help our project, please go to GitHub and give us a GitHub star. This really helps us grow the project and become more visible to people. And with this, we are done again. See you next time.